Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to create a simple whack-a-mole game. And this is a very good project for those of you who are just starting to learn how to code in Java and you want to learn how to build a graphical user interface. You can learn how to do that by building this simple game. And I decided to use images from the Mario franchise because I wanted to make this tutorial a bit more fun. So there's a small and this small will hop around these tiles so we have nine tiles and the goal is to click on these tiles so that when you click on a tile with a mole you get points and at the same time there is a prana plant so if you're familiar with the mario games if you touch the prana plant you lose so in this game the prana plant will also be moving around and if you touch the prana plant you get game over so just to quickly demonstrate, you can see we have this mole. It's moving around. If I click on it, we get points. And I can click on it several times until it moves around. And then if I click on the plant, you can see game over. All right, so that's how the game works. All right, so before we begin coding, I just want to quickly mention that I am working on a Java game tutorial series. So currently for this tutorial, I have Whack-A-Mole and my next one will be Flappy Bird. And on my channel, I already have a tutorial on Blackjack, Minesweeper, Tic-Tac-Toe, and Snake. I also have game tutorials in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I have a tutorial on Doodle Jump, Breakout, Flappy Bird, Space Invaders, Wordle. I also have one on Whack-A-Mole as well. Minesweeper, 2048, Candy Crush, Blackjack again and so on. So you can find all of these tutorials on my YouTube channel and you can also find the same list on kennyipcoding.com and I will continue to expand the list of tutorials available on my channel so if you are interested in that make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on new tutorials and uh, yeah you can find all this on kennyipcoding.com. All right, so for this tutorial, I will be using Visual Studio Code. And if you want to learn how to set up Java with Visual Studio Code, I have a tutorial on that and I'll link it in the video description. All right, let's begin. Control Shift P. Java, create Java project. No build tools. I'm going to create this project on my desktop. And for the name of the project, I'm just going to call it WAC a mole. All right, so now we have our project folder, whack a mole. In our source folder, we have this app.java file. All right, so within our app.java file, where our main function is, I'm just going to get rid of this line and write whack a mole, whack a mole is equal to new whack a mole. Okay. And then I'm going to right click on the source folder, new file, whack a mole.java. So all of our code is going to be written in this whack a mole class. So we don't need this file opened anymore. So I'm just going to close this and collapse this. All right. And before we continue, in the video description, there is a GitHub link where you can find the completed code. Click on that link and make sure you download these two images and then drag them into your source folder. So after you've done that, your setup should look like this. You should have your app.java file with your main function, the whack-a-mole class file, and these two images, okay? All right, now let's begin coding. So the first thing we need to do is create the window for our game. For our window, we need to specify a width and a height. So I'm going to set the width to 600 pixels and board height to 650 pixels. So our game is going to be roughly 600 by 600 pixels, but I decided to make the height 650 because we want to add some room within our window so that we can add text on top where we can display the score. So after that, let's create a JFrame frame, and this is going to be new JFrame. So the JFrame is going to be our window, and let's give it a title. So let's call it Mario 
whack a mole. And this is something we need to import. So I'm just going to go ahead and import a bunch of things here. So import java.awt.asterisk, import java.awt.event.asterisk, import java.util.random. So we are going to use this random library to place the mole and the plant in random tiles. And then finally, import java.x.swing.asterisk. And the nice thing about Visual Studio Code is it will tell you which import statements are not being used. So here you can see JFrame is part of the Java X Swing library, but we will be using these later on. So uh, yeah, let's continue. So let's create a constructor. And within our constructor, let's set some properties for our window. So the first thing I'm going to do is frame.setVisible. I'm going to set this to true frame dot set size we are going to pass in board width and board height frame dot set location relative to null so this is going to open up the window at the center of our screen frame dot set resizable to false frame dot set default closing operation jframe dot exit on close so within our window we have a x button and if we click on that it will terminate the program and then finally frame dot set layout new border layout All right, now let's run our program. And we are getting an error here. So let's see. Whack a mole. Ah, I spelled it wrong. All right. Yeah, so sometimes um, it's spelled with a K. So it's easy to confuse. So in this case, I spelled it without the K. So yeah, just make sure the naming is consistent. All right, so now if I run it again, hopefully it should work. And there you go, we have our window. So now what we need to do is create a panel for the text and then create a panel for the game itself. So let's start with the text. All right, so now that we have our window, let's create a panel for our text. And for the text, we need a J label. So I'm going to call this text label. And then we need a panel to hold the label. And then within our constructor, let's also set some properties for both the text label and the text panel. So for the text label, I'm going to set font to new font, Arial, font.plain, and I'm going to make it 50 pixels. Text label dot set horizontal alignment. J label dot center. And this is going to center the text instead of having it start on the left hand side. And then let's do text label dot set text. And then let's have it say score zero for now. And then text label that set opaque. Let's set this to true. So that's all we need for our text label. And now for our text panel, I'm going to set layout to new border layout. And then I'm going to add the text label to the text panel. So text panel dot add text label. And then after that, I'm going to add the text panel to the frame. So frame dot add text panel. All right, now let's run a program. So now you can see we have our text panel 
with a label and the label says score zero. So it's in the middle right now. And what we want to do is push this upwards so that we can have room for our game. So to do that, all we need to do is add another parameter border layout dot north. All right, so now we run our program. You can see our text panel is now over here. All right, so now that we have our text panel, let's create another panel for our game. So J panel, board panel is equal to new J panel. And likewise, within our constructor, I'm also going to set some properties for our board panel. So for our board panel, we are going to set a grid layout of three by three because we have three tiles by three tiles. So board panel dot set layout new grid layout three three and then frame dot add board panel. All right, so now we have our text panel up here and our board panel down here. Currently, you can't see it because our board panel doesn't have anything in it. So what I can do is type board panel dot set background color dot black. And this is going to make the background color black. So if I run a program now, you can see we have our board panel over here. So I'm just going to come this out. If you want, you can style the game later on to your liking. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as is. So our board panel has a layout of three by three. So I want to add nine buttons to our board panel. So up here, I'm going to create an array of J button and I'm just going to call it board. And this will be an array to keep track of all nine buttons. So down here, I'm going to create nine J buttons and I'm going to do so using a for loop. So for int i equals zero, i less than nine, i plus plus, J button tile is equal to new J button. And then I'm going to set board of i equal to that tile. So the tile is a J button and I want to add this to our board panel. So board panel dot add tile. So now we have nine buttons and we've added them to our array so that we can keep track of them within our code. And we added them to our board panel so that we can display the nine buttons. So now if I run a program, you can see we now have nine buttons and they are clickable as well. So now what we need to do is add the plant and the mole to these buttons. So to do that, I need to load images for both the mole and the plant. So you should have these two images in your source folder. So for the buttons, we need to use image icons. So image icon, mole icon, and image icon, plant icon. And then over here, let's load the images. So let's use the plant icon for an example. So to do this, we would do plant icon is equal to new image icon, get class. So get class refers to whackamole.java dot get resource. And over here, we are going to pass in the file path for the image. So dot slash piranha dot PNG. All right, so it's going to be this piranha dot PNG file. And to add it to our button, we just need to do tile dot set icon plant icon. All right, so now if I run our program, You can see we have the plant icon in all of our buttons. And there is an issue in that the actual size of our image is much bigger than the button itself. So we need to resize the image. So instead of doing it this way, we need to use a workaround. 
So first, I'm going to create an image. Plant image is equal to new image icon. Get class dot get resource dot slash piranha dot png. And then over here, I'm going to do dot get image. So this is going to get the actual image. And then what we're going to do is plant icon is equal to new image icon plant image dot get scaled instance. So we are going to scale it to 150 pixels by 150 pixels. Java dot awt dot image dot scale smooth. All right, so instead of directly getting the image icon from the source, we're going to get the image and then scale it and then create an image icon out of that scaled image. All right, now let's save and run our program. And now you can see our image icon is now 150 pixels by 150 pixels. All right, now let's do the same for the mole. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste this. And then I'm going to rename the variable to mole image. And the source is going to be Monty because that is the name of the mole in Mario. And then this will be mole icon. And this will be mole image. And then to test this, let's just change plant icon to mole icon. All right, now let's run our program. And as you can see, we have the mole image on our buttons. And if I click on a button, there is a rectangle surrounding the image. So let's hide that. So what I'm going to do is tile dot set focusable to false. So now if I run a program again, You can see when I click on the mole tile, nothing happens. Okay, there is no rectangle. And you might get some kind of delay when you run your program, depending on how fast your computer is. It might load the buttons slowly instead of showing all nine at once. So to fix that, what you want to do is take this frame.set visible, copy and paste this. So we're just going to come this out and then bring it here. So let's format this. So basically, by setting visible to true at the very end, we ensure that all our components are loaded first before we make the window visible. So now if I run a program, you can see it's instant and it'll show the nine buttons instead of loading each one one by one. Okay. All right, now let's come this out. All right, now that we have our board panel with our nine buttons, and we are able to display the mole and plant images on these buttons. Let's place the mole and plant randomly on these buttons and have them move around every few seconds. So we need a few more variables for this. So we're going to create two variables to keep track of the current mole tile. So each tile is a J button and we are going to do the same for cur plant tile. So this is going to be used for keeping track of which tile has the mole and which tile has the plant so that when we click on a button, we can do a comparison. And we want to place the mole and plant randomly. So random, random is equal to new random. And after a certain amount of time, we want to have the mole and plant move to another button. So to do that, we need a timer. So set mode timer and we need one for set plant timer. All right. So over here, we're going to have set mode timer is equal to new timer. And within here, we need to specify a value and this is in milliseconds. So I'm going to put 1000. So 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. So every second, we are going to perform an action. So new action listener.
and we are going to define public void action performed and it's going to take in an action event e so every 1000 milliseconds or every second we are going to call this action performed all right so over here the first thing we need to do is make a check so if cur motile is not equal to null this means that there is already a J button assigned to the kernel tile. We need to clear it. So first we need to set the icon to no. So we are going to remove the image from the button so that it is no longer visible to the player. And then we are going to set kernel tile to no. And then after that, we are going to randomly select another tile. So int num is equal to random dot next int nine. So this is going to give us a random number up to nine. So it's going to be from zero to eight. And then we are going to select a random tile from our array. So j button tile is equal to board num. And then after that, we are going to set curl mode tile to tile and then curl mode tile dot set icon mole icon. And here you might be wondering why I don't just set curl mode tile to board of num. And in a few minutes, you will see why, because there is an edge case that we need to cover. All right, so now that we defined the set mode timer, we need to start the timer. So set mode timer dot start. All right, now let's save and run our program. And now you can see every second the mole is hopping to another button. All right, so now let's do the same for the plant. And actually the code is going to be pretty much the same. So you can copy and paste this and change the variables if you want, but I'll just type it out. So set plant timer is going to be a new timer and I'm going to make it 1500 milliseconds. So every 1.5 seconds, the plant switches to a new button. So new action listener, and then let's add a semicolon here. So public void action performed action event e so if cur plant tile is not equal to null we are going to set the icon to no and then set cur plant tile to no and then we need to get a random number. So int num is equal to random dot next int nine. So again, this is from zero to eight. So it doesn't include nine. J button tile is equal to board of num. And then cur plant tile is equal to tile anchor plant tile dot set icon plant icon and then likewise over here we need to do set plant timer dot start all right now let's run our program and you can see we have our plant and mole hopping around and sometimes you might see that there's only one tile that is either the plant or the mole so the plant or mole can be missing like just now and the reason is we have two timers. One sets the plant and one sets the mole. And because we only have nine tiles, there is a high chance that the random tile being selected in both timers will be the same tile. So basically, one is overriding the other. And so when that happens, you have cur plant tile and cur mole tile set to the same exact tile. 
However, we can only show one icon at a time. So when I click on a tile that has a mo icon, it might have been a plant icon, and we've overwritten it with a mo icon because now both the plant and the mo are on the same tile. So to avoid this, we need to add a check. So over here, when we select a random tile, we're going to check if tile is occupied by plant, skip tile for this turn. So basically, if cur plant tile is equal to tile, then I'm just going to return. So we've already set the mo tile to no. So if this is the case in that there's already a plant in this tile, we are not going to run this piece of code where we set kermo tile to the random tile. That way, we will still have either the mo or plant be on that tile, but we won't have a conflict when we click on that tile. So I'm going to do the same here as well. If kermo tile is equal to tile, that means the mole is already on this tile, I'm just going to return. All right, so now if I run our program, it's pretty much going to be the same thing, except when I add the click handler for each button and make the game playable, we won't get the conflict of whether it's a mole or plant on that tile. So just to show you really quickly that nothing has changed on the board itself, you can see we have our mole and plant hopping around. And if you see one by itself, that means there was a conflict. So that one was taken by the plant. All right, so now that we have the mole and plant hopping around the buttons, all we need is an action listener for our buttons. So when we click on a button, we need to do something. So over here within our for loop, I'm going to do tile dot add action listener new action listener and then let's add a semicolon here and it's going to be very similar so public void action performed it's going to take in an action event e so what happens when we click on a button so first thing we need to do is identify which button we clicked on so j button tile is equal to e dot get source and over here you can see we have some error and that is a type mismatch so get source returns an object so we need to cast this to a j button and here we are just going to make a simple check if tile is equal to kermo tile what should we do so in our game we are going to increment our score. So we need a variable to keep track of our score. So over here, I'm just going to do int score. And then over here, I'm going to set score equal to zero. And you can also set score equal to zero over here as well. Doesn't really matter. So if tile is equal to current mode tile, this means we clicked on the button that has the mole. I'm going to increment score by 10. And then I'm going to do text label dot set text score colon plus integer dot two string score. Otherwise, if tile is equal to cur plant tile. We want to end the game. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And instead of saying score, I'm just going to write game over. All right, now let's run our program. All right, so now if I click on the mole, you can see our score increments by 10. And if I click on the plant, we get game over. Now there are two issues and that is game over. I can still play by clicking on the mole and both the mole and plant are still moving. So to fix this, what we need to do is stop the timers. So set mo timer 
dot stop and set plant timer dot stop. So this is going to stop the timer from running and therefore the mole and plant are no longer going to move. And then what I'm going to do now is iterate through each button in our array and disable it. So for int i equals zero, i less than nine, i plus plus, board of i dot set enabled to false. All right, now if I run our program, you can see we have our mole and plant moving around. And if I click on the mole, I get points. And then if I click on the plant, game over. So you can see now, the plant and mole are no longer moving, and the buttons are grayed out because we disabled each one. So I can't click on them anymore. All right, so now we have a fully functional game of whack-a-mole. All right, so if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure you give this video a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date. And you can continue working on this game if you like. For instance, an enhancement you can make is have multiple piranha plants appear. So currently we only have one, but you can add multiple. And another enhancement would be if I were to get game over, I want to have a reset button so that I can reset the game and play it again without having to rerun the program. And as a follow up to that enhancement, you can also have a little text over here that shows the all time high score. So you can create a variable to keep track of the high score. So this is all up to you. Feel free to continue working on the game if you like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.